So OpenAI just released Sora, which is a text to video model and the results are mind boggling. First, before we get into this, I want you to see some of the results. Now, a lot of people on Twitter were going, hey, this is going to disrupt Hollywood. This is going to make making movies and films so much cheaper. But I think there was something that was missed by almost everybody. And I want to touch on it. Here is an official statement from their paper. Sora serves as a foundation for models that can understand and simulate the real world, a capability we believe will be an important milestone in achieving AGI. See, what we learned from text and doing LLMs is that if you are able to put in enough data in there and put enough compute in there, you are able to predict the next word. And according to thoughts of one of the ex-co-founders of OpenAI, which is Ilya, anything that can predict the next world has a model of that world, has some understanding of that world. If you now have something that can predict the next frame of a video, then it has an understanding of the world and not just a simple understanding, but an understanding of things like physics, an understanding of things like how do light rays bounce, all of the things that are actually computed on things like game engines. Not surprising, it looks to be that lots of the training data that went into Sora was actually game engine footage and 3D environments. So we see a text to video model that can generate lots of stock footage and there are lots of benefits of that, we'll talk about it. But what I see is we are one step closer to artificial general intelligence, which is this thing that is able to model and understand the real world. Now, understand might be a loosely used word here because it might not be human-like understanding, but there is definitely something in there. And guess what? They just scaled transformers to make this happen. The same underlying technology behind ChatGPT applied to video, obviously with a slightly different set of techniques, but with lots of computational power behind it. In fact, I was experimenting with some text to video models. I thought three months ago, well, there might be an interesting commercial opportunity in making my own text to video models. You can check out one of the slightly sad results here. But it turned out that with Sora, some of the earlier results with lower amounts of compute were producing garbage similar to this. But as you added more compute, it got better and better and smarter and smarter. So Sam Altman's idea of going out and raising so many trillion dollars might not be impossible after all. But it's not the first time that somebody has gone out and said that, well, training a video model, understanding video, actually gives you an understanding of the world. The company Runway ML, which also runs a set of text-to-video tools, has this to say. We believe that the next major advancement in AI will come from systems that understand the visual world and its dynamics, which is why we're starting a new long-term research effort around what we call general world models. A world model is an AI system that builds an internal representation of an environment and uses it to simulate future events within that environment. Research in world models has so far been focused on very limited and controlled settings, either in toy simulated worlds or narrow contexts, such as developing world models for driving. Now, those are all great long-term things to ponder on, but let's talk about the immediate. How does this text to video model thing actually work? How does it help you? So you put in a prompt and it generates something for you. Now, I'll tell you the implications of this. A lot of content creators and editors, of course, in the short term are going to use this to make lots of high quality B-roll. It still can't make a full movie yet. Not just because there are issues, like I'll show you a specific issue, okay? Take a look at this old woman celebrating her birthday. Now zoom in a little bit on this lady in the back with her hands. There's still lots of issues with the thing, so you can't probably use it in serious production. You can't use it for a Hollywood film, but that will get better. That part will get better, and as we've seen, it's getting better really fast. Maybe we'll see extremely crazy stuff in six months. But what is more important, and if you look at some of the prompts that are put in in the results, it's not very accurate to the prompt. It is generating something which is very believable, but it's probably not exactly what you prompted into it. For example, if you ask it, hey, I want a video of Batman beating up two goons and then eating a sandwich, it'll generate something very believable and very nice. Even if there are issues with the physics and some weird backward movement right now, that's probably going to be fixed. The problem is you don't have any control over this. Every time you generate it, the Batman generator will be different. His costume will be different. The two goons will be different. All of those parts will be different because it's generating everything from scratch. As good as the consistency in stable diffusion type models have improved, there are still differences. If you try to generate an image of Batman and then use that as a reference to generate other consistent characters, there are still sufficient variations between the two Batmen where it doesn't seem like it's from the same image set. In fact, with videos, this is even more evident. You can think of any video script in your head, maybe a five minute or six minute video, and then the minute you start writing prompts for it, you have a problem. 
The problem with that is it's not fully descriptive. And in that text, there is some loss. There's some things it's not picking up from the scene. And therefore, when that same prompt is sent to generate an image or a video, it generates something slightly different. And therefore, Sora seems very useful for B-rolls, right? If you're making a video, you want some stock footage. In fact, somebody from the internet took a Sora video and made the lips move to a particular audio track, which is fantastic. The Matrix is a system, Neo. That system is our enemy. When you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. In fact, with a technology called IP adapter, which I use a lot with images, especially for our thumbnails, you will notice that earlier, it used to be able to replicate your facial features. Now with IP adapter face plus, it's also able to replicate your jawline and your face structure and your hair. So, you could be able to make high quality scenes of Superman or Shaktiman or whatever it is with you in it and you talking. And a lot of people think that, oh, Hollywood would be dead or stuff like that. I don't think that's going to happen because we kind of already have that technology. If you've seen my avatars on shorts, they do all of this, exactly this. And yet I don't use them on every video because I want a little bit of that spontaneity still kept between me and my audience. But the truth is, if you're not already working in Hollywood or some big production house and you have lower budgets, you have a cheap camera, you have a not so good computer, this is the best time for you. Because a video editor, for example, would always be dependent on some creator or somebody else to generate footage for them. They would need somebody to shoot. You need an expensive camera for that. And that footage comes to the editor where the editor makes a narrative. I feel like such a good time to be there. Another implication is now you can make very high quality videos of somebody doing a crime, right? So now when you go to court and you have to produce video as evidence, now you can have evidence of anything like a car crash or car crash not happening. All that interesting and somewhat unethical stuff is going to happen. And today we have very few rules around it. With the deepfix thing, sure, somebody spoke about it. No rules were actually created. Nobody actually moved on this. So that piece worries me a little bit that we're not rule making as quickly as the technology is adopting and the technology is evolving really fast. I feel a lot of people keep shouting at me saying that Varun keeps saying six months, this, that, you're a job doomer, this, that. I'm not a doomer about life, right? I think AI is going to make life better eventually once we figure everything out. Jobs, maybe. There might be some issues with jobs in the short term for sure. But I feel like we can't just bury our head in the sand and be like, nothing's going to happen to us. I think it is important that everyone gets together, especially people in power and say, what can we do about this? this these text to video models are coming out. We don't own them. We can't ban them at the India level because they exist outside. And you severely reduce your GDP by saying we will not use these tools. We will not allow these tools in India because there are plenty of international projects that you lose to some other people in other countries who are using these tools. And the CEO of Stability AI actually went out and said, hold your horses. There's even more coming up. So, you know, I can't keep up. And that's why, you know, we're creating so much content because I just can't keep up. And I think it's important for me to keep you in the loop. Uh, I might be wrong sometimes, but it's still very, very important for me to keep you in the loop because all this is going so fast and most of you are just sitting scrolling rubbish on reels and you're not keeping up with these parts because there's also a lot of commercial opportunity around these parts, right? If you can create stock videos, put it in your footage, you become a much better video editor. Your time to actually produce outputs is much, much faster because I think there's a lot of commercial opportunity here, right? Like the fact that these tools exist. We use a bunch of these tools to make our videos much better, right? If you've seen our channels like Breakdown, there's a lot of AI going on in there. So there's so much commercial opportunity for people and I hope I'm trying my best to keep you up to date. I want to end with one last question, okay? When this technology becomes open source and in six months to a year, somebody will make an open source version of this and you can use technology like that IP adapter face to make it look like you and have the same jawline and hair and nose and everything. And it's actually you. It feels like you. It talks like you. We're able to mimic almost every part. You realize that in that footage, by that time, the physics would have been sorted. So it'll actually move like a real human. It'll talk like a real human. It'll feel like a real human. And if you really keep extrapolating that, then one day you might realize that I want to make my own movie where I'm the hero and I go through these trials and tribulations and this is what happens in the world and here's how I live my life and I want to watch that movie. At what point, and this is an Alan Watts quote, right? At what point do you decide that if you can dream any dream, you dream the one that you are in today, where you are the main character, you're going through everything. But the sad truth is you might just be the result of $30 of tokens somewhere in some computing center in some part of the world. That's it for me. Bye.